Welcome back to Full Throttle RC. Today I'm starting a new drag racing build because race car. If you've been following the channel for a while, you might recognize this chassis. This was a Traxxas funny car chassis that I stretched using carbon fiber rods to create a dragster. It ran okay, but I was never really satisfied with it. I had an idea of building a front engine dragster and remembered this chassis, which sparked another idea. Let's see if I can build a drag car without having to buy much by using parts I already have. Spoiler alert, I can't. 3D printing plays a big part in making this possible. I went through multiple iterations of different parts before I settled on what I think is going to work. If you want to see more of how I design and print parts for RC cars, let me know in the comments below. Let's jump straight into the build with the rear end. You can see I have a bunch of cutouts in the chassis already. I did all of this off camera since it was a lot of trial and error to get things to fit. The rear base plate and arms are 3D printed and connected using some hinge screws I had in my randomly organized containers of hardware. The lock nuts on the opposite sides don't get tightened all the way so that the arms can swing freely. This assembly gets dropped into the chassis now and then secured with four screws. I wanted to use some rear carriers I had, but they didn't fit into the design. I found a set of takeoff associated DB10 front and rear carriers, which is perfect since my street eliminator car uses the same style carriers and axles. These are connected using more of those hinge screws. I had a bunch of them. I only had to buy one other thing so far. I'm not sure where it came from, but I had an extra axial transmission that I was going to use in this, but it's too wide. So I ordered the rest of the parts to finish up an SCX10 transmission, as well as some outdrive cups from a Fortech. You can see I have this mounted on a 3D printed mount so that it sits at an angle. I did this so I'd have a little more clearance between the axles and the spur gear when the suspension moves up and down. So I got to this point and honestly, I hadn't even thought about the upper arms yet. Great strategy, I know. I knew I wanted to try to incorporate a sway bar, so I started playing around with a few things. This is a sway bar from my original solid axle monster truck build that I modified to fit this chassis. It slides into these notches in the frame and I was gonna print some brackets out to hold it in when I found these SMT10 sway bar mounts. I shaved the backside down so they sit flush and they screw directly into the chassis. To connect the sway bar to the carriers, I printed these brackets that use a ball mount that fits over the sway bar. These slide onto the sway bar and then screw into the carrier. I need to pick up some more set screws, but for now I'm using a machine screw to lock the position of the sway bar. Now I have what's basically an upper arm and a sway bar built in one. You might have noticed I only put one screw in the sway bar mounts. I left the other hole open for the shocks. I have a bunch of mini E-Revo shocks laying around. The mini E-Revo was actually my first electric RC, so I have a bunch of spare parts for it. The shock mounts up top here and then to the bottom of the arms. And that quickly the rear end is almost done. I still need to figure out how I'm going to shorten the axles since they'll only be about an inch long. For now I have the drive ends in just so I can try a set of wheels on it. These are Proline split 6 bead locks with a custom 3D printed bead lock ring. This looks a whole lot better than the original bead lock ring that only uses 6 screws in my opinion. Not that you ask for it. I have the Proline belted tires mounted on these. I had this set from when I tested them on my street eliminator car, 
and I don't use them on that car, so this should be a good use for them. With the tires on, you can really start to see what I'm going for here. I really like the look of it so far. It'll still need some body panels and a wheelie bar, but I think the rear end is just about done. Next up is the front end, but I have to cut the chassis and repair that small crack before I can start mounting parts up there. So let me know what you think so far. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you get notified when I upload the next part of this build. As always, thanks for watching. Peace.